This means war. This means war. Fighting for my family. Fighting for my finances. Fighting for my mind. Fighting for my life. With me and my money, I'm telling you right now, devil, right now. this means this means war. This means war. This means war. You don't get to bully me. Come on, tell him you don't get to bully me. You don't get to bully me because God is on my side. And the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus. Blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, yeah, 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 One somebody by the hand. Just grab one somebody. Just grab them by the hand. Grab them. Grab them by the hand. Don't hurt them now. But grab them by the hand. Glory to God. I see you, mother, mother, mother. You ain't gonna be by yourself. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Listen. Grab them by the hand and tell them no matter, no, no matter, matter what the devil says. What the devil says. God has the final say. God has the final don't say. Worry. Don't worry. Don't you worry. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. God's already worked it out. Don't you worry about it. God's already turned it around. God's already healed your body. God's already said, yeah. 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 This woman, oh, gotta I gotta get to you. I gotta get to you. Glory to God. The enemy can't win. He can't win. He can't win. He can't win. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, tell somebody close to you. Tell them that the devil can't win. The devil can't win. Tell him he's he making a bunch of noise. But he can't win. He can't He's win. rattling the doors. But he can't win. He, he can't might be win. shaking the building. But he can't come in. He can't come oh, in. God. Oh, God. 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 Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm talking to somebody today. Who've been under attack. But you gotta understand, sometimes the devil's sneaky. And so he attack you, but try and make it look like you ain't under attack. He gives you poison in a sugar cube. Go ahead, diagnose. Go ahead, Pastor. You think it's sweet. Go ahead. But it's killing you. Go ahead. But I want you to know that the Lord is a discerner. The Lord saw what he was doing. The Lord said, I've got you covered. I am your antidote. When you take whatever it was, even by mistake, I got you covered. I make the poison of none effect. I lift you up, strengthen your heart, give you strength. Run on. Tell somebody, run on. Run on. Run on. Don't you stop. Don't you give up. Don't throw in the towel. Run on. Run on. Grab somebody by the hand. Grab by the hand. I'm through. I'm almost through. Grab them by the hand. Goodness. 
I really, really hear in my spirit the struggles yes, sir. of the people of God. Emotionally, the enemy is draining you. You know I'm telling the truth. Somebody say, Pastor, you knocking on my door. The enemy is draining you. You got your face on. What, what, what was that? Hippocletos? Hippocletus, those of you who were in the park last week, the minister talked about, glory to God, that mask. Let me tell you what I picked up out of that as well. He said, the mask looked like you were smiling, but behind the mask, you had a frown on your face. Behind the mask, the tears were flowing. Yes, the mask looked like you was like this. But behind the mask, you were like this. And the enemy wants you to walk around and not be blessed, not be confident in this one thing. That he who hath begun a good work in you. Shall perform it until the day that Jesus come back. Broken hearted, but praising God. Some disappointment, but praising God. Battling opposition, but praising God. Folks don't like you on your job. But you still praising God. Your money is worse than funny. But you still praising God. You got to understand something. The Bible declares that the joy of the Lord is your strength. But if you keep laying on the carpet, if you keep on acting like ain't nothing going well, if you keep acting like, glory to God, you ain't going to win. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, this is a spiritual war. This is a spiritual war. You're in war. a warfare. You're in a warfare. Your flesh is fighting with the spirit of God. Yes. There's a war between the carnal and I'm the spiritual. Yes. But if you keep on leaning, leaning on your carnality, I'm not talking about you walking in sin, but you're letting the devil make you feel like you ain't going to win. Come no. on, tell somebody that's carnal. That's fleshly. We, yeah, this is a simple one here. But if you catch it, it'll bless you. Tell somebody we, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the circumstance, we believe God. We believe God. I told you it'll bless you if you catch it. That's too simple, Pastor. You know the gospel. Is a simple medicine for complicated people. The gospel is so simple. Some folk have tried to make even the idea of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm already preaching, y'all. Amen. Amen. I'm already preaching. Let me give you a scripture. The Bible says to many of us. A very simple, simple solution to your situation. Look at your neighbor and tell him, take the medicine. Most often, when you take the medicine, I said most often, I'm just waiting to everybody get their spot. 
Most often, when you go to the doctor and uh, take the medicine, I can't, when you take the medicine, don't look like it worked right away. You take that medicine, and it tastes, sometimes it tastes horrible going down. And you be like, mm. and you waiting for something like to just explode. But really what happens is the work has already begun. You just haven't seen the effects yet. But tell somebody, but if you keep on taking the medicine, if you keep on walking in the word, if you keep on allowing the spirit to lead you and guide you, glory to God, you'll be like you'll be like some folks. You'll be walking. And you'll, the Holy Ghost will prompt you to think about where you've been. What you was going through. And you'll look back and you say, I don't remember when God healed me. I just know that from there to here, I've been healed. From there to here. A change took place. From there to here. God turned my mind around. From there to here. I became confident in God. From there to here. God picked me up. Turned me around. What used to be a weight. Ain't heavy no more. What used to be an issue. You'll say like the woman, the glory to God, that had that issue of blood. You'll say like that. What used to be an issue. It ain't no issue now. Come on, tell somebody the issue is over. What you got to do, you got to understand this. Is the Bible says, let me give you another scripture. That without faith. It's impossible. It's impossible to please the law. And so what happened is you have to understand that your faith can't be in the doctor. Go to him. Expect him to do his best. Demand he do his best. But that's not where your faith is. Tell somebody, my faith ain't in the doctor. Though I want a good one. I want a nurse that studied. That know her stuff. But my faith ain't in the doctor or the nurse. I want, you know what I want? I want her faith to be in God. Some of y'all caught that. I want my doctor's faith to be in God. And then I want my faith to be in God. And when the two of us agree as touching anything that they ask of God, how many know God will do it? We, 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 we've been talking about the Holy Ghost. I said, we've been talking about the Holy Ghost. And some folks really are not clear who he is. I'm talking about some folks been coming to the church for a while, but, and, and they, they want to they know. And so they want to know who is this? Is it it or he? They want to know. And it's our responsibility who know him, who recognize him, who are sensitive to him. Can you hear me? We have to show them who the Holy Ghost is. Well, how are we going to show them, Missionary Ivory? How are we going to show them who the Holy Ghost is? You know how they're going to see the Holy Ghost? 
in me? Because the Holy Ghost don't act unseemly. I said the Holy Ghost don't go off. The Holy Ghost is not irresponsible or unreliable. <laughs> the Holy Ghost, when he says something, he do what he say. You just got to listen to him. You know what Jesus said? I can tell you what Jesus said. I'm going to tell you too. John 16. John 16. Jesus said, listen, y'all, three and a half years, I made sure none of y'all starved. For three and a half years, you didn't have to worry about no shoes. For three and a half years, even if you couldn't catch no fish, I told you where they were. And y'all fishermen. For three and a half years, I showed you miracles. Not only did I cure a boy who had epilepsy, not only did I hear that woman, y'all, that preacher was talking about earlier, about had 12 years worth of issue of blood, spent all her money and was worse and not better. Not only did I heal her. Not only did I heal Peter's mom mom-in-law. Y'all know Peter. Not only Somebody shout, not only. Not only only did I wait four days after Lazarus died, but stinking already and come back and raise him back up. Somebody shout, not only. Not only. 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 Glory to God. Not only did I, did I, did I. Go, uh, y'all sent y'all on the other side of the lake. Yeah. Told y'all to get in the boat and go to the other side. Not only did y'all get on the water and the waves start going and y'all lost y'all minds. Yeah. Ah, we gonna die out here. How you gonna die? I told you go to the other side. Guess what that means? You gonna make it to the other side. Look at somebody and tell them whatever Jesus told you he was going to do. Tell them the truth is, is. it's already done. You just walking in too. What you afraid of? Told y'all to go to the other side. Waves start kicking. Boats start tripping. And so did y'all. Y'all seen me walking across the water and y'all got so scared y'all said, it's a ghost. Y'all had just left me. Y'all hollering, it's a ghost. You see how easy it is for those following Jesus to lose perspective of who he really is? (laughs) Take Take it personal. (laughs) Did y'all hear what I said? No, take that personal. But understand, Jesus made it very clear. He said, I'm going to get out of here. I know I took care of you. Met all of your needs, made sure you was good, made sure you was together. He said, but I'm getting ready to get out of here now. And the disciples start tripping. Where you going to go? They started thinking about their natural, their carnal. Remember I told you all earlier, the carnal and the spirit are at odds with one another. That's why the enemy brings to you, brings stuff to your mind that you know you ain't even going to do. But he don't care. He just bring it anyway. He bring it and then he adds some more stuff on it. He's trying to trip you up. Understand, they got caught up in their carnal. And they thought, wait a minute now. You, the Messiah. We believe you, the Messiah. We have stood on the fact that you, the Messiah. You told us you was the Messiah. And we believed it. And for three and a half years, here we go. 
Some of us left another prophet to follow you. Jesus said, unlike them other dudes, he didn't use that phrase. But what he did say is that I got to go away. And it's better for you. I know how blessed you have been. I know how I've taken care of you. But it's better for you if I go away. He said, I'm just I'm just loving on you even that much more thoroughly. Because if I don't go away, the gift that I have for you, which is the greatest gift in all eternity. I was going to say in all the world, but that would diminish the quality of the gift. He said the greatest gift in all eternity. He can't come unless I go away. I had an assignment and mine is coming to me and he has an assignment. His assignment is taking you to the next level. Look at somebody and tell them I'm ready to go to the next level. Now, some of y'all just said it because I asked you to. But how many of y'all really ready to go to the next level in God? That was actually about 47, 47.5%. How many of y'all really ready to go to the next level in God? Let me tell you, when you say yes, you got to be willing to go through some stuff. Because any time you decide you're going to serve God, minister, any time you say you're going to serve God, just expect the devil to raise up some stuff outside and inside the church, outside and inside your family. Yeah. So Jesus says to them, I got to go away. I'm, I'm getting on with this service. We about, we about to. He said, I got to go away. Because if I don't go away, what you need for the future can't come. Somebody say, well, some people might think that that was a last minute change in the plan. But let me assure you that that plan was in effect before the foundation of the world. He knew Adam was going to mess up before Adam became Adam. When Adam before Adam wasn't Adam. He knew that Adam was going to mess up. And he knew that Adam was going to blame Eve. And so he prepared before the, let me get up here because some of y'all, he prepared before the foundation of the world that, Jesus, that the Holy Spirit would come and take his place. So the first man, Adam, brought us into sin. The first man, Adam, brought us into sin. But the second man, Adam, who is Jesus, delivered us from it. What you have to do is have faith and trust him. How many of y'all trust Jesus? You, I mean, you trust Jesus. So let me tell you what that means. If you trust Jesus, then you trust the fact that he said, I got to go away. But don't worry, I'm going to send you another comforter. He said, this comforter is, well, he's gone. I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to read this and I'm not going to read the whole thing because I didn't already preach. But just so you can't say pastor didn't read no scripture. Thank you, Brother Deacon. Glory to God. I'm going to ask you all, open up your Bibles and turn 
to John. I told y'all John chapter 16, didn't I? I talked about this in Bible study. I think I talked about it in Bible study. One of them Bible studies. But the Lord dealt with me on this thing. He, would you look at somebody and tell them the Holy Ghost is working on you right now. The Holy Ghost is working on you right now because, because I've got your attention and I know. I got your attention. And it's not me, it's the Holy Ghost speaking through me that grabs your attention. And it's critical that you do that because I told you the way I started this was that many people don't even know who he is. The Holy Spirit. Many times we have been declaring what we know about the Holy Spirit based on somebody else's experience. (laughs) That was deeper than y'all got. We know Jesus by what somebody else said he was. For us, he could be Jesus. Because we really don't know him. Pastor, it's all right, bro. Just keep talking. Let me just go to John chapter 16. That's St. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Y'all there? Verse number seven, Jesus says, but I tell you, it is to your advantage. Yeah, go ahead on stands. We're reading the word of God. And and actually, I'm not going to. I'm going to be through in just a minute because I'm not going to go through all my points here today. Because I've already talked to you what I believe the Holy Ghost wanted me to share with you all. I had some other parts that I talked about at eight o'clock, but for this service, I feel the spirit of the Lord having me to encourage you to receive the Holy Ghost. He says, but Jesus says, Jesus, Jesus talking, y'all. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Wait a minute, Jesus. You've been feeding us for three and a half years. Wait a minute, Jesus. You didn't heal folks and raise folks up and brought people back to life. What are you talking about? He said, it's to your advantage. Jesus, we was on the boat. The boat looked like it was getting ready to sink. You came in and hollered, peace be still. The boat got together and the waves obeyed your voice. He says, it's your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away... The helper, the comforter, the one who gives you peace in the midst of your storm. Come on, say comforter. The advocate, the one who speaks on your behalf, who intercedes for you. The intercessor, the one who stands in the gap for you. The counselor, the one who gives you good advice when you're not sure which way to go. He said the strengthener when you're weak. I don't mean, you know, sometimes it's not that we can't lift it if it's physical, but if it's emotional. How many know sometimes it's just too heavy for us? Anybody have ever had some emotional stuff that was just. The standby. Yeah, sometimes all you need is somebody to stand by. Me and the wife, glory to God, after 50 years, 49 and a half years, glory to God, many times all we could do is just stand by each other. Neither one of us knew the solution or the answer. (laughs) Both of us had to take turns. I'm going to lean on you first and then you lean on me. The stand by. As faithful as that has been for us, God has been even more faithful. The standby. He says he will. He will. If I don't go away, he won't come to you. He says, but if I go away. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. To be in close fellowship with you. 
And he, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, the guilt of sin, and the need for a savior. So the Holy Ghost, I wanted y'all to understand this. The Holy Ghost is the one that lets you know that you need Jesus. The Holy Ghost is the one who says what you're doing is not right. Well, I ain't doing crack. I know. But sometimes you ain't doing crack, but you cracked up. Amen. Or you got some cracks. And the Holy Ghost comes to let you know that the leak that you have. I want to repair the leak. Y'all seen that tape that guy made a boat out of a, some tape? Y'all seen that commercial? He made some, a boat out of some tape. I got some of that tape. I want to get my money back. Because I put it on my boat. And he, when he comes, will convict the world of sin, of sin, of the guilt of sin and a need for a savior and about righteousness, about judgment, about sin, the true nature of sin. Now, let me just tell you something here. I'm, I'm closing. I ain't going to be there long. But listen, the true nature of sin. See, the devil will tell you that sin, sin ain't sin. He'll tell you this ain't sin. This popular, this is in. And so he didn't got folks that have been in the church for years and years sinning. And you better not tell them they're not. If you tell them they're sinning, they'll be like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Kill a Honda and come in Mosquito and Chevrolet, Chevrolet. They'll dance around the room. Would you look at somebody and tell them the Holy Ghost did not come just to make you dance. Now he'll make you dance. But he came to give you power. And let me tell you what Jesus said he came for. He came to lead you. And to guide you. In some truth. Church truth. Children truth. Oh. Elders truth. Oh. Musicians truth. Oh. Let me just tell you this. You got to get this. The Holy Ghost came so that you could be reborn. And live a new life. Y'all got that? Jesus said, I'm going away, but he's going to come and he's going to be in you. So if you have been saved, you were saved by the Holy Spirit indwelling you. He brought you in. You were not smart enough. You were not deep enough. You didn't have enough degrees. To decide to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Matter of fact, the more degrees you have, most often you think more of yourself than you ought to. But the, Jesus said he's going to come and let you know that you degreeless. He's going to come and indwell you. And he's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to show you the truth of what's right, healthy, holy, and righteous. That's why he's here. That's why when you feel like you, something is coming up, you about to say something, and, the spirit, and you feel like you ought not say it, that the Holy Ghost saying, don't say it. That's the Holy Ghost saying, listen, look at your neighbor and tell him the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost has, an has an accelerator and brakes. You better get this. And so you can take your seat, close your Bibles.
That's good enough. We talking about the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, if you put your Bibles down, would you just clap your hands for the Lord and holler, thank you, Jesus. 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 I want you to get this. It's, it's critical. And I'm, I'm, I'm through. I want you to get this. You get word after word after word. But if you never allow it to saturate your soul, you end up, once the word is poured out on you, like water on dry ground, it'll run off. And an hour later, you'll be just as dry as you was for the water came. So, you've got to allow the word of God through the power of the Holy Ghost to saturate you. See, the Holy Ghost will prepare the soil for the word of God. Huh? And so it's critical if you are. If you have not been saved. And the enemy has been playing tricks with your mind and soul. Then the Holy Ghost came to arrest his trickery. If you have been saved, but you have been in and out and some, you know, we've been around the church for a long time. So we know how to go in and out and people don't really know unless they seen us. Sometimes there's somebody with the spirit of discernment and they can pick it up. And then you go off on them and tell them they false prophets. I hope I'm messing with some folks in here. Aster, you're being a little harsh today. No, no, no. I'm, I'm loving you like a father, like a shepherd. I'm saying to you, the grass that you're now chewing on is unhealthy. I'm saying that God wants to challenge us to grow forward, to grow forward. To do greater works. We've been called to greater works. And he wants us to do that. And we, can't, we cannot do greater works. Continuing to do the same thing we've been doing. Allowing ourselves to get away with the same thing we've been getting away with. Look at your neighbor and tell him you ain't been getting away. It's just the grace of God. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Let me say, yeah, let me say, we're getting ready to get ready for your offering today. We, we want you to get your offering together. Now, listen, this is the first Sunday. But before I, before I go to the offering, I want to do this. I don't want to lose sight of where we are. There's some people here today who really need to know Jesus for real, for real. You need to know Jesus. And what I've shared with you today is, has pricked your heart. And you really want... One second, Dick. You really want to know Jesus for real. You've been running around the edges of this thing. But God is saying now, you can't go running up and down the beach and not get in the ocean. It's time for you to get wet. If you're here today, would you everybody bow your head and close your eyes? And if you want to know Jesus more intimately, more personally, if you want him to lead you and guide you, if you're tired of some of the things that have been able to steal your thoughts or your mind, if you've been feeling anxious and feeling used and abused, if you've been feeling depressed and angry, if that's you, I want you to lift your hand right where you are. You feel like you need to know the Lord more, more personally. If that's you, lift your hand. There's one. Come on, lift your hand. There's another. Come on, lift your hand. Listen, Jesus knows who you are, and he wants to bless you. I said he wants to bless you. There's another. Come on. 
It's something when you can come to the Lord and allow God to just use you like he wants to use you. Because if God used you the way he wants to use you, guess who gets the real blessing out of that action? You do. Those hands that are raised, raise them again. Maybe there's another, but raise your hands. Raise them. Raise them. I'm going to pray. Those, those who raise your hands, raise them again. Come on, let's pray. Everybody pray with me. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry for everything I've done wrong, for my disobedience when the Holy Ghost told me something else. Forgive me, Lord. Accept my apologies. My heartfelt sorrow. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to live right. And according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I am saved. I am saved. And I need everybody who prayed that prayer and meant it to look at somebody and tell them, I'm saved. I'm saved. Say it with authority. Tell them, I'm saved. 